What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final forecast featuring uh, several WVU alumni basketball players. We got Deshaun Butler, KJ, John Flowers, and you guys are just coming off of the big alumni basketball game. So let's talk real quick about that. How was the game? Did anybody do anything dumb that uh, is going to come back to haunt them on YouTube? <laughs> Uh no, Rob Summers. Rob, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rob. Tried to, Rob tried to get a dunk, but lost the Jets. It was kind of embarrassing. Yeah, he's he's seven foot, so he's a good guy, though. Rob is. He's a good guy, good but guy. he can't dunk. No, no, he can dunk. He just wasn't ready to dunk that possession. <laughs> now, it's a possession I, thing. I heard you put up big numbers. Jay Sean, wrong. Day, Day Sean didn't put up big numbers. Jay Sean Page did. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, I thought, Jay I thought, Sean. oh, I thought Day you said Day Sean. I hurt my feelings. Oh, so you, you put up no yeah. numbers. This guy's who I, I just, I literally shot a couple of layups and I smiled and waved. <laughs> oh, oh, look, with like the queen. Mm. Hey. <laughs> Except I'm the. Never mind. Jay Sean had uh, 53 points or something like that. He got yeah. MVP, but they lost. I mean, we lost. Yeah, you did lose. But I didn't pick the teams. Teams were picked somehow. You picked the event. Know. You're the what guy in charge different. of it. And I, I didn't pick the teams. Team. Exactly. The rest were cheating. The rest were cheating. Deshaun, but Deshaun Butler was cheating. KJ was cheating. It was just a debacle. That's why we lost. I guess winning is the new cheating now. I Dave. guess that's, that's what we're gonna call it. Winning's the new cheating. <laughs> out right? of all With your of host, you, John Flowers. Out of all of you, I believe KJ. I back think back. he is the <laughs> he's the most trustworthy person. He, agree, he just agreed with me. That's crazy. That no one cheated. No one cheated. It was fair and square. Fair and square beat down. That's what it was. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's think. Let's talk about something that is not fair and square. The state of the NBA. Do you guys think it's cool that uh, LeBron can pick his spot and his teammates? Because to me, that's the only sport that you can do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure other players can do the, do these things in other sports. I feel like it's a a bit of unselfishness you have to have to take a step back and. Play, I mean, you, you want to play with uh, – you want to have an opportunity to win games and you want to give yourself the best chance of winning. So you take a step back. Maybe you meet up with your friends. Maybe you meet up with another player that uh, you respect or you think is a really good player. And, you know, you 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 make your own destiny. I mean, I feel like that's the whole point of uh, life in a sense. You know, you get the opportunity to do what you want to do. And You said pick his team? Like He's well, picking yeah. the team he wants to go to. He's, yeah. Tr- yeah, I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that because – Teams pick the players most of the time. It's free agency. And they always talk about this, like, players not being loyal to their team because they want to go out and do what's best for them. You know what I mean? And and teams aren't ever loyal to players. You know what I mean? Nope. If the, the second someone gets hurt, they, you're on the, uh, the waiver wire or whatever. You NBA guys call it. Is that what it's called? I've never. KZ? Um, I'm sorry. I don't know what that, what that means. Where do, you get, mean, where do you get your terminology from? Yeah. I heard Hug say it one time, actually. The waiver wire? Okay. The waiver wire. Okay, well, the waiver, yeah, the waiver wire is essentially if a team lets you go and then you're on waivers, you could be picked up by another team. But here's really what I want to know from you guys. So a team like the Lakers can make a play to get a guy like LeBron, or, or there's like a handful of teams that can. What about teams like the Milwaukee Bucks, which are not going to get LeBron for any way, shape, or form? Don't you think that ruins the league a little bit? I don't, I don't think so. I feel like... Everybody's talking about how super teams ruin uh, ruining the league, but at the same time, like it's it's exciting to see because you know it's not a definite thing that they're gonna win. You know that the chances are high, but at the same time, it's always good to see how dominant they can be or if they are actually dominant at all. You know, you gotta. It's not about having like all the best players. The players gotta fit, and I think the move with Kevin Durant going to the Warriors, the pieces just fit at the time. Question. John, I'm Qu- sorry, you were, you were hissing. <laughs> I think anywhere KD, KD would have went would have been a good – he could have went anywhere and helped anything. And not won the championship, yeah. That's not – True. Unless nah. he went to the Cavs, he KD won the run, KD is arguably the best player in the world. So he could have went anywhere and helped his team argue. in the playoffs. What? Is KD not one of the best players in the world? Oh, you said arguably the best. Arguably the no, best player in the world. It's not close. I don't, it's I don't not close? I don't, I don't think it's close. close He's second, but he's a far second. He's a far second. So that's argue. That's what arguably. No, means. no, it's not. It's I'm not, not arguing arguably, with you at all. I'm just gonna let you know that. Close. that right. Arguably, he. You can make an argument. So you I see can't. a lot of players like Kevin Durant walking around here. No, he's Seven arguably foot. the be- the second best player, <laughs> and it's by far the second best. So who's the best? LeBron James. Why There's is LeBron? No why is LeBron better than Kevin Durant? He does more. 
as far as as an, on a consistent basis, he does more. He he's broken more records. He's uh, he's been in a little bit in the NBA a little bit longer. Obviously, that that helps. But he's broken more records. He's going to break more records. He has, and he's thirty four. And he's thirty, yeah, 34, 33, 34. Come on, man. He's, like he's, in his fifteenth year. In his fifteenth year, he. Like you could take bits and pieces of KD's best years, and you won't get the same stat line from LeBron this year because they both do different things. Like LeBron is like the head of his team. Like even yeah, at OKC, I KD I know. wasn't. KD's still not the head of his team. Exactly. That's, that's so what that's, you want from the best player in the world. So if KD was on another team where the team was built around him, his stats would be a lot better. You right? know, no, no. Here's the thing: Kevin Durant is on a team where he doesn't have to feel pressure. Yeah, I do agree. So with he you has that. no pressure, so he doesn't have to step up to be the forefront yeah. guy because there's no pressure. So when there is pressure, that, that it's a smidge different. Like when he's with just one All Star and maybe two guys are not as healthy, it doesn't look as good because yeah. the pressure is a little bit different. That is Katie's downfall. He's from the DMV. He's from Maryland. I'm from Waldorf, man, the hood. You know what I'm saying? But he, Katie's from up the road. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Google Maps. one of his downfalls is basically he just shies away. He doesn't want oh, – I don't think he wants all that pressure on his back, man. That's sad, but so, I think he could say – I think personally, I believe KD can handle any type of team he's on, any pressure, and it, I think it would actually be better. I, I want to see KD go to uh, D.C., actually. We'll would love to see that, too. That would personally. Be his team. I would he, love to see KD go to D.C. He'll be back home, and he will have a chance to just dominate and just stop all his critics, man. So, okay, so he wasn't built around – Kevin Durant? No, it was both around him and Russell Westbrook. So Kevin Durant did. Harden. Kevin Durant waited just like LeBron did to make sure the team got like he. This team is Kevin Durant's team. Oh, it is. Tell uh, Westbrook that. Do you I don't, he just has a bigger supporting cast, like a bigger, bigger help. But it is Kevin Durant's team, and people like Steph Curry, mm. and Steph Curry can shoot threes. But Are you talking and about the it Warriors? Is, yeah, it's Kevin Durant's team. Nah, even not OKC, his best. it was Kevin Durant's, <laughs> it was Kevin Durant's, team. Kevin Durant's team at OKC. He was the alpha. Russell oh, wow. Westbrook is the alpha male. He had the he had the more he had the bossy personality. Exactly. But that but was KD. It's team. Katie's team. It's Katie's team. Why didn't KD have the ball at at the end of every game? When because Russell close Westbrook games? is the point, point guard. guard. But it's KD's team. He's, the, he's Mario the, Thomas is the point guard. Was the point guard of uh, Miami. But LeBron, LeBron had the, the ball at the end of every so game. So the question is, you should be talking about why the coach didn't how that happened. That's that has nothing to do with because Russell Westbrook. It was an understanding that they it was a t- it was a team. Like they played t- together as a team. It wasn't anyone's team. Like do you think the coaches together as it was team. their team? Yeah. Do you think the coaches have that much say? <laughs> and what happened? I mean, I'm just wondering because I don't know. Some coaches, not all. I, I, I agree. I don't think some coaches know. have I, any control. I, I like think some do. Not all of them, though. No. At an not- NBA level, I feel like, especially with younger coaches, they don't have as much control as like because I think the <laughs> last year KD was on there was it Billy Donovan was the is the head coach. Mm. I I can't say that he would have as much control as maybe Scott Brooks was. Yeah. When his, his time there, because it was like his second year there, I think, I want to say. Have we seen the end of guys like Phil Jackson who have total control over superstars? No. I don't think that he had control over superstars per se. I just felt like he had two. He usually had two or three really good players all the time. That I think they generally yeah. enjoyed playing together. I mean, winning yeah. winning makes you happy. I mean, those there's three all, guys you know, usually did a lot of those, a lot of scoring in the triangle, and I mean, everybody did a lot of scoring sure. in the triangle. So like. It's a, it was a really good offense that the, yeah, I think, the guys benefited from. I think they just bought into the system. Yeah. Who is the greatest? Who is the GOAT of, of the NBA in history? Because <laughs> this debate is raging on right now. This debate, I mean, even my mom asked me, and she's 73 years old and a white lady. I mean, the question is, who's the best player who, ever to play? Who is the GOAT? Who's the GOAT? Who's who's the goat? goat? What, is it, like, what does that mean to? Greatest of all time. I feel like you, you can have different categories of different players that be like the greatest of all time like I feel like when you sit there and go all right cool basketball players you really feel like stood out by far when you see Michael Jordan that's a guarantee when I see LeBron it's a guarantee when I see um Kobe's like in my eyes Tim Duncan is a guarantee like power forward like by far so I can't just sit there and pick one player because they all play different positions they're all they were all great at a certain point in their career I can never just pick one person in, in my like, opinion, but if, if you're forced to, I kind of pick the guy that does a lot more 
and I feel like LeBron does a lot more. Jordan did a lot of a lot of winning in a short period of time, though. Yeah, so I that's agree. always like respected. But like people, I figured like are really dominant in basketball. Jordan was like extremely dominant in basketball. He had his flaws as well as his really good points. Same as LeBron, flaws and good points. Same with uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Like he's the yeah. one of the greatest, like if not the greatest center ever. Flaws, he's the most dominant player ever to play. NBA basketball. Well, this is a good O'Neal. conversation. Sean. Kill O'Neal. Like, I, yeah, yeah. Shaq. That's like, so there's no way you can. I disagree. Really? What? Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain scored 100 points. Enough said. Yeah. So, okay, that was a different oh, wow. Era. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It doesn't matter what era, if you ask, if if you ask a lot, no disrespect. Points, no matter if I'm not gonna lie. high school, middle school, you're going to be impressed by that, aren't you? That's very impressive. No. I'm not going to lie, Kevin. What? What? No, no, no. We're not going to discount 100 points. That's a lot of baskets. This is what I'm talking about. Competition, it means everything, too. Yeah, it Competition does. Means that's what I say. I wonder who. He was playing and it's not a disrespect. The, it's not. <laughs> but so if I go down to the not, YMCA and score 100 points, yes, you guys gonna be impressed? Oh my! The fact that you, I don't think you would be can, impressed. No, 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 no. I'm not. At I'm his not saying YMCA scoring. He wouldn't. I'm not saying I, I would why give. He's I'm not saying I would give him like the ultimate, like the ultimate respect about it. But it's NBA is not the YMCA. It's still impressive if somebody scores 100 points. Like I'm not gonna discount. That you know you still a question because at the end of the day it doesn't matter who you're playing against you still have to make shots um, I have a you question. still have to make the shots oh my that is true Kelly. that is that is you true still have to you still gotta it. make them you still gotta make them that's a good point what kind of shot it that is, is a good point throws, you still gotta make them question i know oh, as a lot of people uh, a lot of basketball players i know they uh whether they've been in the nba overseas whatever do you believe like there's a cutoff where you like respect basketball at a certain extent without disrespecting uh, any older players like do you feel like there's a a cutoff where you say like, man, I don't know about the fifties, bro. Like I don't like that's not what I feel is like the best basketball. Or at one point was looked at as the best basketball. Like people always say the eighties was like the best re- was one of, like one of the best ba- like basketball times. Or nineties with Jordan is like one of the best basketball times. Dream teams, yeah, dream like teams. dream teams, like that era, like some of the best basketball you'll ever see ever. I think they had better basketball IQs back then. That's what I'm just curious. Like, is there a and certain period of time where you sit there and go, when someone's like, "Yeah, you won't believe, you won't believe uh, what Cleo Hill used to do out in the park," <laughs> and you like, bro, like, Cleo don't just... talk to me about <laughs> Cleo Hill or no disrespect to Cleo Hill because actually that's a person. But I'm just saying, like, it's actual person. But still, like, do you, do you believe there's like a cutoff? Because I know guys that sit there and go, "Man, get out of here! I don't want to hear that." And then there's guys that respect it. I don't really know. I feel like. Whatever you do in your era, you should respect it because it's it's yeah, still your your, it's er, your it's era. Time like you it's in the, exactly. It's the time you win. You're against like like players like you, so you you got to respect what people did in their era. I, I yeah. can't say that yeah. the 90s you could have did it two thousand, right. or yeah. I could have go back and oh yeah, I really could have played better if I was in the eighties. So with, with like, you don't know, and, I don't know, but you do know he did do work in that yeah, era, exactly. <laughs> like, and that's that's sure. what's like, exactly. like, so and know, that's the Will point. Like, scored hundred so, points, and that's the point. So with that being said, you can't compare players in different eras. That's what I'm saying. So I don't, then in I don't turn, think there's a, so I can't turn, say there's a goat. So in turn, though, so then who are we talking about being the greatest of all time in our era? Then? In well, our era? In our era, LeBron. I think you have to. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I, think, have it. I think you guys are missing somebody very important in this conversation. You're talking if about the we, Birdman? Yes, I am the talking Birdman about Larry nice. Bird. How so could, what are we what's, – what's his era, Larry Bird was, 70s, the 80s, or 80s, yeah, I mean, he was, eight, he was 80s. He was 80s. He was basically 80s. He's basically 80s. time, but what Larry Bird did – Jordan was still getting no. Jordan was getting whooped though. Yeah, this yeah, wasn't when he was, was like younger, doing work. Was he was getting he was scoring and, and killing, but he yeah. they they tortured him. Boston and uh, L. A. tortured him. Yeah. By the way, Detroit, you gotta count the Pistons Detroit, in there too. Detroit yeah. tortured him too. Yeah. I just wondered, you know, what are the three things? And, and we'll just go around the room, and I'm gonna put Deshaun on the uh, spot to go first, so you guys get a chance to think about this. If we had to, if we had to leave this room picking the greatest NBA player of all time, what are the two things that you think make the most qualified things in an NBA career that make you the greatest player of all time? Any era, what are the two things, the factors? I would just say people would have to, like a majority of people would have to look at you and say, out of all the basketball players we've seen on film and like and seen in person, this person stands out by far. We haven't seen anything like this person do any of the things that he's doing, so on and so forth. That, and I would just say, 
I would say the dominance in the game. I just I would say those two things. Like when I when I watch Michael Jordan, I sat there and go. I would say like, wow, like I never seen anybody score in so many different ways between the three point line as far as posting up with guards. Just his mid range game was amazing. Sick athlete. I never seen anybody do that. And then you can say the same thing with LeBron. Like you've never seen anybody look like LeBron or a Shaq. So in the to go to Kevin's point, like I feel like just judging people and comparing them, and they're in different eras and different times. I feel like everybody would have their hardships in those eras. Everybody might not do as well in certain areas because of what was going on and how the game was dealt with. So it's just tough to judge. Like I can say what I think about now because this is what I know. Like even me looking back at film on Jordan, it's not the same because I don't feel the same about it. Uh, for me, I feel like most people would say um, championships. But I'm going to go with, uh, like, iconic moments, like moments that stand out in my mind. And I'm like, wow, this person, in, like, the biggest moments, he's he's always there. Or 90% of the time, he's there and comes through. And, like, that, you, you can't discount that. And I'm also going to count the impact outside the game. People, like, like Jordan, when it comes to Jordan and his shoes and um, everybody's sticking their tongue out when they dunk or the way they move on the court, like, you got – you got lots yeah. of people saying that they mimic their game after Jordan. Even some some of the best NBA players saying they did it. So I, I just I put all that into consideration. Like that's that's crazy when you have other players who are great too mimicking your game. So yeah. I, I, those two things I would say. I agree, and I would say that uh, John, whatever two you come up with, are also going to be booted in by fashion. <laughs> by fashion? Yeah, you're a fashionable guy. <laughs> yeah. You love fashion. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the game though. So I won't hold anyone in the NBA who can't dress accountable for, you know what I mean, their game. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to just, you got to be dominant and what you did for the, the culture, you know what I mean, the culture of basketball as far as, like, Iverson, he had the crossover, like KJ said, MJ had the, you know, he's he's impressionable with his, uh, his tongue out, flying Air Jordan, you know what I mean? T Mac had his signature moves, and you know you you gotta leave your own impression on the game. So I think that's what I I, I agree with you. Actually, I think branding is one of those it things is. that it makes it indelible for me to not pick Jordan. And for me, the flu game. You KJ said something about big moments. I dare I defy anyone to score thirty eight points. Sick and dying on a bench. Sick and dying Look, in the flu. You've seen, you've seen it's, that. It's tough. You have like, I know. Seen... Hey, how many games have you guys played sick before? A few. People I'm... have played well sick. I don't want to talk about my last Yeah, I know. Sick. You don't want to hear that it story. Brings back, it brings back <laughs> nightmares. That I don't want to talk about. You're sick. <laughs> yeah. KJ doesn't want to play because he has I a don't sniffle. Give it. <laughs> KJ has a He's sniffle. sick. The immortal words of Coach Huggins. <laughs> <laughs> my freshman year. Tough. Tough did loss. You, did you take it big when you were sick? Uh, KJ lost us in the – what was it, the first round? Yeah, it was the first round. You lost the first round wow, of the tournament. Wow, uh, because, because of me? Year. Wow. <laughs> my sophomore year. That's um, – uh, Who do you play, Dayton? That's a lot. Yeah, that that's was Dayton. That was Dayton. That was Dayton. That's a freshman's uh, shoulder. <laughs> exactly. That's a lot. You should have okay. sat down. Big <laughs> big shoes to fill. <laughs> Go to sleep. The, the funny thing is I didn't even tell Coach Huggins. I told our <laughs> assistant coach, Coach Martin, which is supposed to be my boy, but – He donned you out. Yeah. For sure. Quickness. With the quickness. I think it is unbelievable. I I bring up the flu game, and you guys are quick to dispel how important it was. The fact that he was sick. That is amazing to really? me. Really? Well, yeah, well, I know I'm people that walk into work but, sick every day well, and in, get it I, done. I, I come it's in amazing. here sick, but I'm not an iconic basketball but you player probably who had, in 38 points sick. But, but you probably had some of your best days sick. Yeah. What's, what's crazy is I think <laughs> it's a mental thing. Like, when, like, when you – Playing sick or something's bothering you or you're hurt or something, you actually do play better because you know, like, you if you play it. bad, you can always say, oh, I was hurt this game. So I, you go out playing. You could, you know, you're just out there playing with no worries, yeah. stress-free. So that I, I I, That's cool see. to get your perspective on this because you guys have all been in the spotlight playing probably not well. But to, a, to yeah. someone who couldn't – I couldn't hit a free throw to save my life. Yeah, okay. I, to me, it was one of the most impressive things I ever saw, like the 100-point game. I mean, I wasn't alive to see it, but it is unbelievable yeah, to think about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, just, I think about that all the time because overseas, they can send you home for anything. You know what I mean? Like if you have a bad, one or two bad games. So 
if I'm like when I was in Venezuela, I was sick one game, and I was like, damn, if I have a bad game, they're gonna send me home. So I was like, I was already making up excuses in my head, like what I was gonna tell my boys, like why they send me home. And I was just going to say, yeah, I had a bad game because I was sick. So they basically just sent me home because I was sick that game. <laughs> Damn, yeah. that is a lot of pressure. Yeah. It can be. John, you are a fashionable guy. You wanted to talk about some yeah. – and I, I got to tell you, I mean, just as a guy who's you know regularly wearing, wears basketball shorts and T-shirts to yeah. work, mm -hmm. I can't believe the way people dress. Who, why does LeBron have to have a $300,000 alligator bag and a suit with shorts? See, yeah, it's just – I don't some some players in the NBA are just weird to me, man. Like with uh Westbrook the stuff Westbrook wears and the stuff that uh James Harden wears and a lot of these other guys is just weird to me. Like is it like I want to I always wanted to ask you and KJ this like what's going on in these locker rooms that make guys say, Hey, let me put on this onesie with the with my slippers and what walk into a game today like what is it what what do y'all do y'all like joan y'all snap on each other in the locker room when someone walks on with some stupid shit on some stupid stuff on well it's hard to snap on somebody who makes uh tons of more money than exactly you. that's kind but, of the um, rule oh, wow. yeah I'm but there. i, I so think you're scared. No. i think for me for me personally i think people just make too much money and they just want they're just willing to try like anything because at the end of the day they know people are gonna talk about what they have on it's i think it's okay like good for branding themselves and marketing especially russell westbrook he knows like where every crazy outfit he has on people going to talk about it for the next week or so you know what i mean yeah. so i think it's kind of in a way a little bit of a genius Troll. plan he did, yeah he did get a deal like he is like a model for yeah. some clothing company. It's like trolling, is it not? It's ridiculous. So <laughs> y'all y'all don't say like if you played on Kobe's team and Kobe walked in with some stupid shit, something stupid on, y'all wouldn't say nothing to Kobe. Like, yo, Kobe, what you should ask Ebanks. I don't think many people are allowed to talk to the person. For real? Yeah. That's what, uh, really? Is that true? Some people are like that. Like is you can say something, but like you could you, you ever get a vibe around people like sure. where you say something and they just seem annoyed or something? <laughs> like you just like uh, maybe I shouldn't yeah, take a to take you guys a step probably back. go through that every once in a while. I mean, yeah, it happens to everybody. Like yeah. everybody, like somebody annoys everybody. So, <laughs> like, I guess. Well, I mean, <laughs> but nah, I would, nah. Some people are just too too into themselves. I would say you can get that a lot from like certain people that I've met I couldn't imagine. from other teams you know what I would, and so I don't on and so forth. Who Deshaun Butler is? If I would have showed up here freshman year and said, "What's up to Deshaun?" or just try to talk to him or something, this is my teammate. Exactly. You know what I mean, I, me and Deshaun were gonna fight. Huh. If that were the sure. case, I would expect him to, though. I mean, I don't that think that's, make sense. that's not cool to do that with people. <laughs> like, there are people that you cannot talk to. Like, they just do not want to be bothered. I, I think that, that. Uh, people probably don't, don't think about those types of things when you are in a team atmosphere. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Tom Brady is elevated to the point where the 53rd man on the roster doesn't get to talk to him. Yeah. He's probably not even in the same locker room. <laughs> not uh, with this, him. Is this guarantee yeah, that's, that's going on. <laughs> is, have you guys? I want to know from from all of you. Who have you walked into a locker room? Uh, whether they were the most elevated player, if you've ever been in a locker room with a guy like LeBron or anything else, but who who have you walked in and just went? Damn, I can't believe that's blank in the same locker room. Anybody ever blow your mind? Because you're saying that you, nah. John says, well, you should just be able to walk up to anybody. I'm just wondering. So this, you... All right, so this is a story. Like, when Deshaun got drafted, Deshaun got drafted to uh, Miami or whatever, right out of school. So the next year, when after I graduated, Deshaun showed me a lot of love. Like, he flew me. Me and Joe Missoula were going on tour. Like, we were just flying all over the place hanging out because we were just happy to graduate, you know what I mean? Deshaun flew us out to Las Vegas, and I was in shock. It was, was it Memorial Day weekend? Was Memorial Day. It was Memorial Day weekend. Deshaun, I'll never forget this. Deshaun flew me out to Vegas, and I'll never let a man fly me out anywhere again. Just, just wanted to throw it out. You're almost a married man. It wasn't a fly. It wasn't technically, it wasn't technically a fly out. It wasn't technically a fly out. I had free tickets, and then I got, yeah, there was free tickets. Yeah, got me out the way. No. But I was a broke college kid, you know what I'm saying? So me and Joe, we flew out to Vegas. We flew to Miami to hang with Dave. We flew to Vegas to hang out with Deshaun, you know what I mean? And I'll never forget, like, I was just seeing all types of NBA stars there. Like, who did we see? We saw, I mean, we saw just a bunch yeah, of yeah, Zach yeah. Randolph, uh, Jawan Howard, Ronnie, Patrick Ewing. Ronnie Terrioff. Ronnie yeah. Terrioff, Ron Artest. A lot of like a lot of people. I was in shock. Like, man, oh, you know who that is? I'll never forget. Deshaun came up to me. He 
He could have had too many drinks, but he came to me. I was like, I was like, Dave, you know who that was? Yo, that's that's wasn't it? Every time I saw him, I was just in shock. And Deshaun said, Yo, why are you so just calm down? Like he do the same thing you do. You bust his ass. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I really calm, it really put things in perspective for me. Like I really started thinking, like, yeah, we actually do do the same exact thing. Like we did the same. all play basketball. We <laughs> like, did the same thing they had to do. Yeah. Like they had to go through the same the same path you had. Yeah. Maybe they got off an exit early and yeah. got a chance to get money early. Exactly. Or it's the same thing, man. Yeah, exactly. So you don't treat anybody above you or any type of stuff like that. That's that's how they <laughs> that's how they kind of smoke you out in a sense. Yeah. They make you do silly stuff. Yeah. That's if they I, find out like you're you're giddy or sure. want to be want to yeah. want to belong in a sense male like groupie. male groupie. They figure out all right, cool. This young dude's just gonna. <laughs> Romance. Yeah, his young dude's just happy to be here, so let me just run him around town or some shit like that. That's what happened with KJ. They can, they can do that stuff to you. KJ got his a little bit in the NBA. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but it. that's every rookie. That's you're every rookie, get, yeah. You're going to get Hayes regardless whether you, you got his there or not. A eh, little, little bit, but no. I wasn't there long. They didn't get Hayes. And then I went to San Antonio, and no one hazes anybody there. This is I'm with a, I'm on a team yeah. full of grown adults. Like. <laughs> So I mean, when that. you think when you say yeah, haze, haze, that makes it sound like it's some like college prank. You gotta shave your head or something like that. Pink book bags I mean, for, on your back, walking yeah, that, around that was, is yeah. Just, that was crazy. I had to do a pink book pink book bag. Oh, you had did. to carry around a stroller with a fake baby doll in it. <laughs> so what? Do you, I had to get Krispy Kreme before every shoot around. So y'all never was like. I think Ebanks would. I don't know if they haze him or not, but as a rookie, I think Ebanks would have been like, man, nah, I'm not yeah. doing none no, of we that. Had, we <laughs> had that. We had uh, Dion Waiters who did that, and they put popcorn in his car while he was playing Bruh. in the game. <laughs> no, and when nothing. he came back out, his car was full of popcorn. He so I said, tight. nah, I'm going to just do what y'all asked me to do. He was tight? Yeah, of course. You got get popcorn home. in your you car. Popcorn you know in your how car. hard it is to get the smell of popcorn out your you car? Know, you got to get a detail. <laughs> what kind of car you had? I don't know. I think it was like a... Like it was a big car, maybe Escalade or something like that, but it's it was tough. full of popcorn because yeah, <laughs> I mean, he refused not to get Krispy Kreme. So you go right on ahead, John, and refuse to not do no, it. Like, I didn't say I I'm wouldn't not, do it. I'm not going to oh, lie. Oh, okay. It's saying, not even, like, it's not as bad okay, as, okay. and it could sound bad, but like as much as that stuff may happen, they also take care of you as well. For sure. Like if you do, you'll do like two dummy missions or something like that. They'll tell you, like, could you know, Rook, grab me some food really quickly from this place. Or, yo, They'll tell. I, I remember one rookie had to get all the towels after they shower. Oh. So like, but then like when they go, we went to let me say like in Atlanta. Like one of the vests took me out and bought me some stuff when I was in Atlanta. Just take like to help me like oh, he just took take you care shopping, of me. Huh? Basically, nice guy. Yep, yep. <laughs> tricked me, didn't he? And like, I feel bad nah. about my plane ticket. Nah, man. don't. Like dudes will help you out. They, they they show love. Like it's no big deal. Like yeah. you get some stuff. Like these dudes have way more money than me at the time, yeah. and they don't want you to spend your money. They want you to be smart and do what you're supposed to do. So, you know, they tend to look out. And then you might run into some other people too. So like, it's, no, that's it's I, a lot of people involved in the sports stuff. <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of people probably would would never really kind of wonder. I, I mean, I, I wondered about it. Somebody actually said to me when I told him I was doing this podcast with you guys. I mean, you guys are heroes in this state for sure. And they're like, "Well, what's that like?" I'm like, "It's like four dudes talking about stuff." Like, you know, it was cool to watch you guys play because I was watching you guys play. It's also cool to get to know you. But you're not my heroes. I think you're more my friends. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so yeah. when we can, when you don't have that, that thing, just because you guys are famous, you know, it doesn't make it. It doesn't have to make it any different. I mean, I'm sure if I saw Kobe Bryant, I'd probably shit a brick. Uh, <laughs> regardless, I mean, I, I once yeah. saw. I was working this event. The Mario Lemieux had a golf tournament. I watched Mario, Emmett Smith, and Michael Jordan play thousand dollars around poker. At a, t- mm. at a country club table. Yeah. You want to talk about shit in a brick? <laughs> I, w- I couldn't believe it. Because, I, I, first of all, I'd never seen $1,000 at one time, let alone 3000 in one hand. Word. And these are the three greatest athletes in the history of that moment. you know. And, and I think it is probably something that, that people don't realize, that they're just regular people who like to play poker. They just happen to have an elevated st- stance in life to do so. Yeah, That's what I think, like... I always wanted to be approachable. Like I'm a people person, so I always make it uh, a, a note of mine. Like always be approachable. Don't ever let. I don't want anyone to ever think they can't just come up to me and say what's up. You know what I mean? Like ever. You are very friendly. I mean, you are. Yeah, I'm a people person, man. Because I wouldn't want anyone doing that to me or my kids. Like if I go say hi to Kobe Bryant, he's like, 
Oh, uh, the oil just blows me off. I'll be yeah, like what? That's why I heard like a lot of people are like disappointed when they meet their idols or their celebrities because they're just assholes. Like, there's no reason to be that way. It, it costs you nothing to be a nice person, man. I think that should be on a bumper sticker if it's not. Okay, it let, let's let, let's switch is. topics a little bit. It can be NBA or not. Facts. Who is. is the most famous asshole you've ever met? Mm. Doesn't have to be NBA. I can't. You can't. Yeah, do I you never, have a bad story? I can't. Do I never. You, can't I never really met an, an asshole. In, Good. In NBA. No, I'm not saying NBA. I mean, it could have been. Oh, in life, like, in I, life. Do I know, do well, I know just like asshole? someone who's famous who you were like you met your idol when it kind of crushed you. Did it ever happen to you? Nah, I'm. I met Michael Jordan before. I was. I didn't like him either, though. So I didn't. Uh, really? Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, you could elaborate as much as you want because he's only like the goat. Yeah. So, so I, I played in the uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I played in the Michael Jordan uh, Classic that they have in the Garden, and uh, that's the regional game. And then afterwards, they have the national game. So we played the regional game, and uh, after the game's over. They're like, yeah, you got to get in the locker room. You have to wait for Michael Jordan to get here, and you guys will take pictures, and, you know, you, t- you get a chance to take meet Michael Jordan and all that crap. So I'm like, all right, cool. Can't can't wait. I'm a Knicks fan anyway, so I'm not really a big fan of Jordan anyway. So I'm, like, waiting for there to take the team picture. So as soon as he gets here, this, I remember this little short Asian dude runs in. He goes, hey, I need everybody against that wall. Don't touch Michael Jordan. <laughs> so I'm like, it's like, Dude, don't touch Michael Jordan. Who the hell is he? Like, we're going to walk up to Michael Jordan and touch his face? <laughs> like, like, who cares? Like, But uh, dude walks in. He stands, like, right next to me. Just picture. Well, as he's walking off, he goes, yeah, fellas, uh, I can't say I watched y'all game. I was just at dinner with the, uh, the, top, the national players. So, but thanks for playing. And then walked out. <laughs> Damn. And I've never – I've continued to hate Michael Jordan. I was going to say, that's, of, why, that's why you I've think LeBron's nev- a good one. I've always been a, a hater of Michael Jordan. I love his game. But you loved him before you met him, though. Nah. What? I was a Knicks fan. I told you, I've never liked Michael Your Jordan. You're a guy. Yeah. Forever. Yeah, I know. KJ, you got to talk because you have a story, and it's brewing in your head. It is. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> I've, all right. I'm going to – I'm a, before I say my statement, I'm gonna say that uh, <laughs> you don't have to I say feel, his name. Yeah, no, no. I feel like people people already have a preconceived notion about you just because you may play a sport, so they might think that you're a a bad guy anyway, or you're yeah. not approachable just because you play sports. I have a lot of people come Very up to me and say, so. um, "I didn't I didn't know you were so friendly, or I didn't know you were so approachable because they see me from a distance." They and they know what I do, so yeah. they already automatically feel like I'm not approachable. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like you you got to understand that if you're at the height of, like, I'm not saying that he's excused for this, but if you're at the height of, like, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, somebody like that, you probably get people who come up to you every day, every day. that want something, mm-hmm. want something from you, try to do something harmful to you to put themselves in the media or something like that. Yeah. So you got to be extra careful. You got to. You got to be careful about who you talk to, who you're around. True. You know what I mean? True so that. you can't put it all on them, you know. But at the same time, if you're – you can be as nice as you possibly can yeah. without putting yourself in a harmful position. But now, to <laughs> I say that to say um, – It's all right. I don't, really have, I don't really have a story, though. Like, my, my favorite player is Kevin Garnett. So uh, oh, yeah, my first you. time playing against him, I was – it was in Boston when he was playing for the Celtics. And um, – he wasn't – it wasn't off the court, so I can't say he's not a friendly guy, but sure. on the court he's like a, a different monster. Like you played he, against him? Yeah. I actually had to guard him for like a couple possessions. <laughs> How'd that it go? Was, it didn't Try go too well for mine. But he probably talked mad Yeah, shit, for sure. Bro. But some the, most of the times he's not even talking to you. He's just talking to himself, getting himself like fired up. Yeah. So it was just like one of those situations like, wow. like so this scared, is scared, huh? No, nah, wasn't scared. It was just it's like definitely alarming. But. Yeah, it was like, like <laughs> what's wrong you know, with you? You don't know you're talking to a dude talking to himself, but like it's Good? just one of those like. situations. <laughs> like, like wow, like this is the guy that I looked up to, and now I'm playing against him, and he's talking trash it's to trash me. Like, it's, yeah, just rambling. But rambling to himself. I guess I would say that is the closest thing I came to. So did you try to kill him though? Like. Course, you know, was you you just, know I'm gonna do my thing, you like John. Nervous. You know how I do against you. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I'm not KZ. Same it's different. I didn't say a thing. word. You look the same. You look. <laughs> like I love my fans. Like I love everyone that 
loves me. You know what I mean? But sometimes fans do some annoying stuff. Overboard. Yo. Too uh, much. That's tough. Too yeah. much. That's tough. Yo. Too much. Is this the mix up? The mix up stuff is kind of <laughs> killing. That kills me. What's the mix up? Jay Sean, oh. Deshaun, Kevin, <laughs> Deshaun. That, that. Yeah, that's, yeah, clear yeah, yeah. This, that's we, tough. We Deshaun look nothing, nothing alike. alike. Not one bit. People think the two are you the same no, person? No. This has been going on when, for like yeah. years. Yes, and we, and there's <laughs> jokes about this. Like literally, <laughs> really? people. Li- Me and him have this thing where if I'm going somewhere or he's going somewhere and someone confuses one of us with each other, we text each other immediately. We have a so game. Like, we have a game. Right? It happens. It happens. He got yeah, it last. He was alike. the last person I got. So like someone walked up to him and was like, hey, dang. He's like. Text. <laughs> I was walking in the street. Somebody literally yelled out their car, Deshaun Butler. <laughs> and you probably looked around like, where? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't know you were around here. Walking down the street, some dude throws his hand in the air for a high five. Kevin! <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Now I got to walk by him. And now now Kevin looks like a jerk. <laughs> now, because yeah, they, they don't like, know who I, I am. Remember I mentioned that one time you were <laughs> um, like, the no, jerk. It wasn't me, man. Exactly, that, that like, happens all the time too. Yeah, I met you at a. Oh, sure. No, you didn't. You never met me. Before. I, yeah, some I of the wasn't. things that get on my nerves the most are when they're super drunk and won't stop talking or like spitting in your face and just belligerent stuff like that. Shop like you can't him. wrap it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. When people that, can't wrap it up, that kind of annoys yeah, me too. Yeah, And then the the bathroom, like you're in the bathroom and someone's like, oh, Deshaun Butler, what's up, man? Like you're standing by each other, they try to shake your hand or pat you on the back. Bro, get After the, they just use the no, bathroom, pissed. like, come on, man, can you just Bro. wait till we get out of the bathroom? Or the dude that won't, he just won't take no to the shot. Here's the, another <laughs> thing. Check this out. This thing is so <laughs> annoying. This and is a PSA. This is, is this very annoying. Service. If if there are any college kids listening, like I want you to know, like the guys on the team have, they don't feel the same way. This is like a long time ago when I was in college, so don't take this stuff out on them. But when I go to a bar, like I appreciate the offer for shots. Like I thank you. And if you want to, if I'm like definitely in the mood to drink and I'm not driving or something like that, I'll be I'll be more than happy to take shots with you. But when I tell you that I do not want to take the shot, I do not. I do not want to be followed around the bar. <laughs> like, hey man, come on, you want to take I'll this? Come around. on, man, you could do. You don't want to do this? <laughs> come on, I don't agree. Come with on, this, like, whenever you want to buy me a shot, let's do it. Because well, if I'm out, I'm drinking. Did anybody ever come up to you in the club and pull out a marker and ask you to sign? <laughs> sign there? Yeah, in the club. Sign what? In the club. Sign what? <laughs> This shirt. Uh, nah, no, but not he not had a nice me. shirt on. And it was like, you want, you really signed, want me to sign you? Signed. I signed it because it's like, what, you, <laughs> nah, what are you going to do? Sign but aces. He pulled, so that means he was prepared to see somebody. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to carry this marker with Sharpies, me. Sharpie season. <laughs> Just in case. Sign my, I need somebody. Sign my baby. Yeah, that's my crazy. Baby. Hold my baby. I'm, sign I'm like, my forehead. I don't, I don't like care sign how skin. somebody is. Sign the skin is weird. Take a picture I'm, with my wife. <laughs> I'm not holding somebody's newborn baby. I'm sorry. I yeah. agree with you. I wouldn't do it anyway. I don't want to be responsible for if something happens. Oh, yeah. Loose neck baby all. Neck exactly. off flopping wanna, all over the place. I don't want to be responsible tough. for this. You dropped that baby, bro. I'm scared of Yeah, you dropped that baby. It's over for you. They want you to sign it, too. It's over. Don't just hold it. Sign it. You signed a baby? I signed a baby before, yeah. Have you guys signed like, baby? No, I don't, no, I I don't sign skin, bro. That's so skin. weird. Skin looks weird when you're signing it. Yeah, I just can't do it. It's, 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 it's a human. It's a human body. I just don't yeah. feel and like it's signing gonna live. Off, though. It get yeah. sharpies. Later that night, it's gonna. Walk. It's like, yeah. what are you gonna do with this now? So, so if a kid walks up to you and say, "Hey, sign my hand," what are you gonna say? No, no, no. no. I signed. No, I, I know. signed it, I signed but I'm saying it's still weird, though. No, I agree with you. I think that is weird. What? And oh the, the First of all, loose neck baby might be my new favorite <laughs> loose term. Neck <laughs> loose baby. neck, a loose, loose neck baby. Neck just baby. Hanging That's out. scary, loose man. Because you got to hold babies a certain way. You just don't throw your baby on people. I swear. <laughs> exactly. You don't know like, who. Here, you don't know who. What this, this person? Who, what would you say? People are like, yeah, here, hold them. Just take take this picture. Right. I'm like, I'm, I don't want to hold your baby. You can hold them, and we could take a picture together. That's another thing, though. Like, you don't know who pictures. Take another one. Take another one. All right, love my kid. Like, take one with my kid. Like taking a thousand pictures. Like, come on. You I don't can mind take pictures. one picture real quick. I mean, I don't mind pictures. We can take one I don't real mind quick. Too bad. But 
it's take this picture and then they don't know how to work the camera. That's annoying. That's, That's annoying. annoying. It's like if you ask for the picture, at least. <laughs> That's like, annoying. They never have the camera ready. smiling for like a minute. Never. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, you got, it's, ho- you, it's so hard to hold that smile because then it turns fake <laughs> and sour. Now you're like. <laughs> they give it to some random person walking down the street like, all right, how do you use the camera? And then they're just sitting there with it. Then they. Like have it the fingers over the camera. You don't not know how to use phones. I guess I'm curious. Like, like yo, you, you, you have an iPhone. <laughs> like you have an iPhone. I don't know how long you've had it, but you have one. You, you got to know how to use the camera. That's crazy. That's yeah. like part of the. Do, do you guys ever wonder how many times those pictures end up on people's walls and mantles? Like you're, like yeah. right now, you guys are hanging in strangers' houses. Yeah. Does that that weird you uh, out at all? I don't even think people keep half of this stuff. Really? I personally don't think they do. Like, like so I had to be in someone's house to see that. Like, so, okay, I, so you don't think right now someone has around, like, above their mantle, fireplace, their mountaineer shrine somewhere. <laughs> they somebody. don't. They have a picture of them and you from somewhere, and you don't think you're hanging in somebody's there's house? Somebody, there's somebody that has <laughs> it. Then there's, there's the, the people <laughs> that just did it because they were with their friends, and then they got it done. And then there's the people that are selling them to whoever they're going to sell them to. Does that bother you? I would love to make money. Well, that's what I'm saying. No, there's, I mean, just kind of branching into a different topic, but one yeah, that probably yeah. is is probably pretty close to you guys. That's an that's an annoying thing. It has to be because I mean, I, I you know I do stuff with a lot of bands that we play on CLG, and I you know but there's some like you saw in my office. There's autographed guitars in my office, and they were gifts from the bands for for hanging out and, and whatever. And bands I've known for a long time, but I also know that there are people that line up, wait for hours, and then bring. 10 basketballs and you know damn yeah. well like if i asked you guys to sign a like, basketball you'd probably do it for me i put on my mantle and it'd be cool yeah. because we're doing this thing yeah so. but, but you know guys, the guy that has 10 it, of them that signed. irks me 10. Yeah, it irks me that happened overseas when i was overseas a ton we get this one guy that would show it to the game and but like, hey could you sign this for me and then i'm seeing stuff from from my freshman year of college i'm like bro you don't know me you don't care <laughs> like where, what do you what do you get in for this yeah. like it's like stuff through, throughout my whole career, and it's like 15 items you want me to sign. That's He's crazy. flipping through a book. I'm like, I'm not signing these next 14, but no, my you, friend. You, you definitely have, like, people that actually care, though. Like, Yeah, definitely. I love those And I love, those, I love signing. All, like, that's that's not even the issue. Those people that like, show up with 20 items. You know that, who they are. That yeah. kills me. I love it when people, like, come up and, like, oh, I took a picture with you in 2010. Yeah, that's dope. And then they show me on their phone. I'm like, oh, it's not you like. remember where you are? And shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. I love that's that. Fine. I actually don't mind people getting, if, hey, man, get your money, man. Yeah. If, you, really? if that's, if that's, I don't mind it. Like, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't really they, bother me too much if I know somebody. Only reason it bothers that, me is that it's me. He's taking money and getting made, paid off of me, and I'm not a part yeah. of it. I'm, I'm not really. I'm well, not really. That's been happening for four years. Now. Yeah, I know. It's been happening forever. Like, that needs to change too. I'm not. Oh, really. yeah, that's a good topic, man. That is a that great topic. Does great topic. Yeah. How do we? How do we change that? How do we make college sports more advantageous for athletes and less for colleges? Because I know Pat has a big problem with that. We've talked about it. Oh yeah. Yeah, he. I mean, See, they the use guys, his image and likeness. The guys job. that are really worth something don't have a problem. I'm not really worth anything. KJ should probably Look, have a problem. That's with it. that's a problem. I'm, really, a, I'm not really. It's a problem. My autograph isn't worth a lot. So. Well, I feel like that's well, a problem you know just that, to though? exploit yeah, people in general. That, exactly. How do you know? That? I feel like no matter who you are, you're still playing college athletics. You're exactly. still putting the same amount of time as whoever you feel like is worth. You're a the Final autograph. Four you're guy. Still, you're that's like you're that's like people. That's like people saying, "All right, cool. If you make the NBA, like you know, you're." You're you're obviously in the, in a sense a good basketball yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. So there's a certain level of basketball player when you get to college. So people are watching those sports obviously for the university. They they want to support yeah. and stuff, but they also want to watch good basketball by young individuals. Yeah. So that's you're a part of that. You're a young good individual basketball yeah. player when you're in college. Okay. I just feel that so these yeah. individuals can't get they if they can't get a job if they're only here because they're playing basketball and. They, they get a scholarship for that reason. Mm-hmm. They can't get a job so they can get any more money. They can't accept anything. They, like, why why are you not paying these individuals? They Hands are kind of tired. They, I mean, they, their money they're being made off of them is it's probably 100, 100 times what they're getting. So college athletes should be paid. I feel like I they should. So. I 100% think they should be. You can't do anything else. Like, when, what was your free time? Do you remember you, like what you did Both legit schedule. for your free time break, that you could work? Down. Break your if schedule. We had a week. Of All right, schedule. so let's say I, I had a class uh, downtown at the uh, 
like near the mountain lair. You wake up, wake in the morning. I wake up. I had to wake up by eight. I don't have a car, mm-hmm. so I either have to bum a ride from one of my teammates, and if I can't, chances are I had to walk to the closest bus stop possible. Um, I get there, I get to class. I have class like at nine or nine thirty or something like that, All right. and I have to spend most of my my morning down there, down uh, downtown. Downtown campus. Yeah. And then I have what? Maybe if I'm lucky, I have study hall early. If not, I have practice right away when class is done. Yep. And we have two and a half, three hour practice. <clears throat> Maybe we have weights before. Yep. And then right after practice is over, I got study hall. Study hall. Yep. Study hall till about like seven or eight, depending on when I finish whatever I'm doing. Training it, table. Training table to eat because you need to get something to eat if it's warm because it, they cook it at football first yeah. and then they bring it over to us. So that's how um, it used to be. Yeah. That's how it used to be. Yeah, not now. Um, sheesh. <laughs> And then you I go home and you five. got your... It's like you're home at what, like eight? Yeah, so like <laughs> now you're. I'm doing well in school. They're selling my jersey. I can't make any money off of that. I can't get a job and make any extra money. All right. So um, th- their argument is you're making your money off of your scholarship. So you're getting what? I don't know how much tuition is at what WVU. Uh, well, at any, I mean, whatever it, it is it depends, at any school, it yeah. doesn't have to just be specific. But it's just, this is just the life so of college athletes. All right, so 25000 a year, let's just say. Well, I think it's probably more, it's more than, than that. more than that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I'm just saying if you, I, you know, I, if it's, if it's most of us are out of state, so it, yeah, okay. if it's okay, Stanford, so I'm just it's saying. something more than it's WVU, but it's still all a college education yeah. that you don't have to. For pay the sake for. of argument, I'm saying twenty five yeah, thousand dollars a year. So they're saying you get a hundred thousand dollars, you get a free education, you get free books, and you leave college without any debt, which is that's great and important. Yeah, so that's awesome, this, and that's the great. Saying, that's a great benefit to add. But why are you giving benefits to people when they're amateurs? Why are be- amateurs getting benefits? Like you're getting things that other students don't have. When it's supposed to be, oh, we're all students. You're supposed to be even, but they get benefits. Yeah. They get paid a certain amount of money so they can buy a, make sure they can uh, have like pay their rent, mm-hmm. and they can make sure they eat. But mm-hmm. like, I mean, when you work a regular job, you get benefits, and they pay you so you can pay your rent and you get paid to eat and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So. What's the difference? Oh, you call us. You call them amateurs. Yeah. You make your money off of them. You make your money off of their their image. Yeah. You don't put names on the back of jerseys. You put numbers. We know who that is. So it's two thousand or whatever. So sure. like. So how would the pay system go though? Because you 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 had a big image here, like Dalton Pepper. People might not remember who look, he is. You know what I mean? So how I so how feel, do you break down like how much each player should get paid? I feel like. I don't feel that guys. In a sense, certain players should be getting paid more than others. I do. I think certain players you should get paid more than others. You think there's a scale? You think you should scale it? Because then you got to do that by to. schools. You got to do that by everything. Because some schools, like, for example, uh, Kansas is more known, and Kentucky are think, more known for their basketball than their football. Yeah. So, like, you are going to have, because the school is a basketball school or because the school is a football school, <laughs> some guys like, this is a football school. So you would be, sit, in a sense, saying, all right, cool, well, these guys could walk around with – this and then everybody else that doesn't equate to that stature, yeah. they walk around with nothing. But so I feel like I'm if just, you scale it that I'm way, I'm just be saying like Pat White should have definitely made yeah a lot more money than whoever the 53rd yeah. person was on the team. You, you know what I'm saying? Pat White had a Pat White night. Yeah, like, it was, sure. what was the yeah. whiteout? Uh, white out. Like, yeah, it was a whiteout. Yeah. He should I have just stock feel in his, like everybody, everybody should get like a flat fee as far as like. Uh, stipend or whatever for pay, mm-hmm. and then the rest should come from jersey sales. Jersey sales. That's what I was about you, to say. That's perfect. Because that man. can determine how popular you are as as a player. Is so, how much how much people are buying your buying jersey, jersey. How much people are buying stuff, even though you don't have your name on it. You I know it's your number. I, I, I personally feel like that's perfect. Like you have a flat scale, and then whatever your jersey sells during the year. Because mm-hmm. then nobody can argue that. No one can that's argue. What people you know what are, you want. Are yeah, people buy, people buy the five. That's, yes, you know the, you exactly. Know you know who it is. Now let me ask you. This and this after is, your graduation should be the same. And you should thing. have the name on the back of your jersey too. If you get the name on the back of the jersey, exactly. This changes everything though, because you may become a higher draft pick based on your marketability mm. than you than your talent. Yeah. If you oh, could if you could say no. Well, I mean <laughs> okay, so if everybody nice. and, and I mean I, I don't mean to just keep using Pat, but but we're talking about him. So if in a state of West Virginia where there are no professional sports teams, the number five jersey, I would imagine, outsold every jersey. Still that, selling. It's still, it's selling. still selling. Yeah. But but at that time, at that in that window, the five sold how many? We couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And still does based on his image and likeness. Yeah. If you take that to a, to a place like West Virginia where 
there aren't any pro sports teams, so he's not necessarily competing with a you know, Ben Roethlisberger yeah, yeah. jersey or, you know, or, or somebody else's professional jersey. So you go, you're, you're, a, you're an executive for the Miami Dolphins, and you go, hey, you know what, that Pat White moves a lot of jerseys. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's more marketable than a guy who may have a slightly better talent as an offensive lineman if, he, if you're ranking players, and go, but that guy will move merchandise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should go for him. Does that change the dynamic of sports? It's the same thing that's been going on forever. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's people that sit there and go, yo, uh, Russell Westbrook and uh, Chris Paul or maybe some other guys are better than Steph Curry because they could play an overall basketball game. Maybe they feel like that. But it's Steph Curry time. moves a lot of jerseys, yeah. and he moves a lot of things. Like, he's one as well, but he moves a lot of jerseys. I feel like that's part of it. It's all part of it. I think that's a bad Your example, likeness. I think that his likeness helps him a lot. So you're saying, like, there's making some, shots helps there's him some little. players that should not be in the NBA. Like, no, I'm not saying he should not be in the NBA. No, not, not, not him. I'm just saying in general. Like, there's some players, like I feel the politics like, of I, the no, game. No, no, I feel like the individuals that are in the NBA are in the NBA because they can play. I feel that when it comes to attention mm-hmm. and what people shine to, right. that can change. Like, that can change things. Like, for example, like they were talking about this the other day um, on Center, how people love Steph Curry because, you know, it just lets you know that, a lot of a lot of people can just play basketball because yeah. everybody can just shoot from behind the three point line. Yeah, yeah. So like it makes it, it changes the game in a sense. So in turn, like that change, it gives him a likeness, yeah. a little bit different because everybody can't be LeBron, everybody can't be Michael Jordan, but they can be the guy that can shoot behind the three point line. So now his likeness has changed, and then it's, mm. all these numbers of people look at him and they like him. Yeah. So that's been going on for forever. Yeah. So like, what's the problem with this now? When because when it's time to get on the court or the field, it's going to show. Yeah. Like so, it doesn't matter. If they made a bad mistake, they just made a bad mistake in picking the wrong person. Right. I think um, one more thing that uh, the NCAA can do is even if they, all right, let's just say it doesn't happen and they can't pay the player right now, if they can put away a trust fund, yeah, something like that, something that when the player gets out of out of college, that whether he makes it professionally or not. He can have something that he can fall back on. Just let's say to jumpstart his life until he figures exactly. out what idea. else to we do. We can't do internships. Exactly. No. So we can't just, do that just stuff. so just put something away, a share of his jersey sales, put it into a little fund that he can get when he gets out of when he graduates college. And I think that that should be provided if they graduate or yeah, that should be exactly that That's should be a dope. incentive. Like if you were, if you, you graduate, graduate you college. Get this. You leave you, early, I mean, you here you go. Yeah, oh, that's, exactly. that's, that's, that's dope. You know what what I mean? happens to that 53rd, uh, you know, fourth string lineman from Parkersburg who never sells a jersey? The Don't same, you think he deserves something as well? The same thing. That ha- I mean, I feel like like what Kevin was saying earlier, when if your jersey sells, you get what you get. Like, I feel like it, it, at the end of the day, like the incentive is like, is what? Better. Like, get, continue to work on your it, game. That's like, it's all incentive. it is. It's always the incentive. Like, so. Everybody gets something for doing better. In exactly. Life. That's always it, a reward happens. for you doing You can't just better. give. And, and that's why I almost argue with him saying, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't scale it. You should have a base for everybody that plays in a sense, depending on where they are and all that So stuff. profit sharing. It should be in a sense that. But when you get to, like, you making a bulk of, like, your jersey sales, I think you should get that. And you should also have something similar Mark, to what Kevin says. Market yourself. That's what I did. Yeah, basically. that's the, actually, that's what I'm saying. It. It's my, still, exactly. That's my, dope, too. Yeah, my freshman year, I was playing behind Deshaun. So, I didn't really play a lot of minutes. And we passed some ESPN games and stuff like that. And when we were playing, people from back home were like, well, we, we really couldn't notice you because we couldn't notice who you were. So, I put on a headband, right? So, I wear it, how we wear it, where I'm from in the DMV, kind of back on my head a little bit. So they could just notice who I am on the court out of everyone else. Yes. And I was just being a vocal vocal out there, being exactly. animated and stuff like that. And just that should be part of it. And that's what I'm saying. No, too, but though. still, at the Not same time, has that kind of at the same time, his like that's what creates the likeness. Yeah. And then in turn, I for like in my scenario, I kind of looked at it as like, oh, all right, cool. John's doing like he's doing his own thing. And people loved you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, for example, people may come out and like see me do this or see me do that. But like people legit took a, a liking to you. Like they don't know anything about me. They just watch me. So they that's what, go from there. That's what they kickers like you. Do. That's what. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Pat McAfee was a good kid. He was a good kicker, right? He's a good player. Oh, yeah. He, was a, he was a good player and uh, he was extraordinarily marketable. Yeah. And. When he would make mistakes in life, like 
swimming in a ditch at the end of his street, <laughs> it turns into he like turns a, it to he gold. Turns yeah, yeah, it to gold, yeah. exactly. And it's like, it's that's his personality. But so. I just feel like you ha- that has to be a personality. You can't force it or it just comes off corny. Like, if I were to do some of the stuff that John does, that's not my personality. Oh, true. So I would rather get it how, how my personality is. I would exactly. rather get it working hard. Not saying that he doesn't work hard, but just saying... My way of doing it, you know what I mean. You're not to, as to flashy, out. exactly. Yeah, but you still but find it's the still, way to get yours. It's still effective either way. You just got to find your way. Don't don't try and be like somebody else, you know, just because it may. If you it's not you, you don't have to be flashy to market yourself. Though I don't think. Mm-hmm. No, it's not being flashy, but that's but it's just, just talk to people. But, but that's you though. But yeah, everybody, so it's easy for you to say that. Everybody has a different way. Exactly. Oh, which is the point. It's it's everyone exactly doesn't like everyone doesn't like talking to people. But it's easy for you to say that because you're 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 not an introvert. Is is yeah exactly it's true. so yeah. it's kind of like how everybody like is gonna see it regardless like some people are gonna like it some people are not exactly. it's not gonna be for them like people don't like LeBron he's over there dancing they was talking about talking up a storm about him <laughs> dancing when they were winning games a long time ago and it was a big problem to the point where I guess so many people thought it was corny that he stopped because it was causing so many problems now Steph Curry does it and people don't like it like it's. Maybe he'll stop, maybe he won't, yeah. but like it just depends. Like everybody likes things and does dislikes things. Like True. I you are so ultra marketable, John, just because if I had to start a company, I'm like, you know what, I need somebody who would be great to go out there and just be nice, mm. I'd probably pick John. He's the you know, you you're but you are a different person than KJ, yeah. who I also enjoy in a, in in doing this show with, but He's different than yeah. you. My my dad taught me at an early age, like, he's a businessman. He owns his own company and stuff like that. He said, just be nice to everybody because you never know who that person is or who they will become and how they can help you out in the future. You know what I mean? So don't ever just dismiss someone just because of who you are. You know what I mean? Sure. Don't- I want to ask this question. I, I was, I've been debating on whether to ask it or not, and, and I think I'm going to, and hopefully you don't get mad about it. One of the most marketable Deshaun Butler images is not the most flattering image. It's, it's an image of you getting hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does that bother you that that is one of the images that you have to sign? Because I know you've had to sign it. Yeah, I know. You have? Uh, yeah. Oh, People yeah. ask me to sign that picture Fuck. all the time. They're, well, I mean, okay. Look, I it is it. an iconic picture. Though. It is iconic because the way Bobby came over. Yeah. And, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to ask because I, I think no, that's no, a no. personal thing. No, no, no. It's no big deal. It's no okay. big deal. Like, I feel like that's that's mad disrespect that's disrespect like, in a sense it is like <laughs> I, I get that whole aspect of it and I understand the aspect of people what they like about the picture because it's like you know uh, Coach Huggins showing so it's more for I feel like the picture is more for Coach Huggins than it is for me True. okay that's Yo, why I still haven't I feel even like, watched that game me like, neither. yeah I kind of feel I like watch that game. that's a it's not my favorite thing to do I understand when people come up to me they're like oh could you please sign this and I'm like alright I don't want to be rude I don't want to come off and yeah, but arguably like, you know, one get, of the worst moments of your yeah, life, and people not, are asking you to remember it, it and exactly. then sign it. Yeah, I know. And it's kind of like, get the stop. Hell out of my <laughs> like, I don't know public service do announcement, it. stop. Like, I don't want to yell or say anything crazy, so just stop when you get a free <laughs> moment. But that's literally how I feel about it in a sense. It's kind of like, uh, when I see it, it's just like, that happens, bro. Yo, like, bro, people come up to me all the time. I've seen it for sale in stores. Yeah, I've seen it. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, and I don't I, I don't really know you, but I am yeah, enjoying getting cool. to know you. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, very bold too. I like that us, guy. Us. And I wish that picture wasn't hanging up yeah. for sale mm, in your place with his autograph on it, because that's probably one of the worst moments of his life. Yeah. And you made him sign it. I, and I, I applaud you for being cool enough to yeah. not say, Dude, this was the worst moment of my life. Get the hell out of my way. But I know that has to just mm, – yeah. it has to bother you. Yeah. <laughs> and for you guys, you didn't even it's know crazy. that that happened. I mean, nah, that happens. That's, that's crazy. We don't. I don't even watch that game. Like, I never – I haven't watched that game. I, I honestly didn't think of it like that. But now that I think of it, that's, that is kind of crazy. I kind of thought of it more like, you know, people love Day. People loved his time here. So it was more like, I guess, a, a tribute of – of the work that he did while he was here and it was unfortunate like what happened to him but i don't know i guess now that you put it in that way i didn't i didn't see a negative but what, that I picture is a tribute bro it's just, like i'm i'm uh-huh. saying like he he did a lot of good things here bro but and just saying that the fact that he got hurt like and the way coach huggins was like consoling him yeah. it was kind of like so. 
I never and that's what I'm saying. I never thought of it like that in a sense yeah, either. But so I, there you have I'm it. just I don't that I can but I can process. see how how it, that could be. It has too. beauty to it and tragedy yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think the there's two I don't think it's just one thing where it's just like totally yeah. tragic or totally Yeah. Once again, to like it. it's like two sides to it. I, I don't I don't like the pic like the picture is what it is. Yeah. It's not my favorite picture to yeah, just come yeah, out of like someone brings it out, I'm kinda like, All right, bro. Like yeah, no, I, I mean, whatever I, I you want to like, have in your house, I guess, is what you want to have in your house. That's not going to be in my house. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, sure. like, I was going to say, that is not hanging above never, the butler like, mantle. Not like, uh, it's not. That's not one of my favorites. But Well, I, I appreciate you being honest about that because I, I just thought since we got into that conversation about signing things, I remember in the last couple, because we just started kind of yeah. doing this, in the, in the last couple of days I have seen that photo. And um, I getting to to know you guys a little bit, I don't want to see people take advantage of your autograph or your kindness, of which you're all three very kind. I mean, when you do something like the alumni game, yeah, people come out, they pay to come, and it helps benefit a foundation, and it it pushes your entertainment company. So you expect to sign autographs and pictures and things like that. But, you know, if somebody sees you walking down the street and they have a picture of the worst moment of your life, and they're like... that in your pocket. Or even bring that picture to the alumni game. Well, like, why would you... Yeah, like, I haven't... haven't, That's what I'm saying. I haven't signed that picture probably, like, in two years. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those things I was kind of like, uh... Well... Like Try not to do. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the honesty about it because when I saw it, I thought, I almost want to buy it just to get it off of your shelf. That's a shelf. bold question, Rick. I almost jumped over this over this desk. Don't calm yourself, please. Uh-huh.